<laughs> you make really great pizza today and everything. What is like the, you know, obviously there's been some kind of evolution to that and everything. Um, like, is your pizza, would you say it's different now than the way it was, you were making it in like 1980s or 1990s, right? Yes. Like, what, what, what would like, uh, what was like the Sicilian process like when you were a kid, like at your father's place? Um, the like, Sicilian dough. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, what would you guys do? Were you par baking? Were you straight cooking it? The the Sicilian dough I remember as a kid because our Neapolitan our round pies were very popular. Uh huh. So we sold Sicilians, but it wasn't as a big of a mover. Right. So it's not like we made a separate batch of dough for Sicilians. Okay. Okay. So what we did was just you know we took two doughs, twenty ounce dough balls, put them together on a sixteen by 16 pan uh-huh and that's it just we just we just did it like that with two doughs on top of each other like, oh you put two dough yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i remember doughs. going to places and doing that a lot of places did that because you know if the doughs were overproofed they could use those doughs put it together without throwing them out you know you never threw anything out sure you don't throw anything out that's how we got garlic knots Okay. Garlic knots was invented because you don't want to throw out the dough. Let's do so with the tie in the knot. Put some garlic on it. You don't throw it out. Did you guys have like different size doughs at all? We did at one point. Did you guys have like, or, or uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant different size pies, like a small, medium, and large? Yeah, we did at one point. We had a, we had a, we had a 16 inch and an 18 inch. Okay. And what'd you do? You cut some of the dough off? No. No? It was <laughs> no. just. <laughs> it was a 21 ounce dough ball. And it was, you just stretch it bigger for the 18 and stretch it smaller for the 16, you know? The 20 ounce, 21 ounce dough ball was good as a 16 inch. When you made the 18 inch, they put less sauce and less cheese on it. So like that, you know, you got the nice fold. It doesn't, it doesn't flop or anything else like that. And that was, the, that was the thing with it. They also had, you know, wooden boxes. Really? So, so proof in the dough was a lot different back then than it is now. You so, know? oh, so when you when your father opened up, they were still using wood trays. Yeah, I was still using wood trays. Oh, yeah. get out of here! Uh, yeah, I, I I remember I remember dismantling them because we were making way for the for the metal trays. We had metal trays because we had a refrigerator where we had metal trays where we just to slide it out like this. What and like sheet pan trays or? It, you know you know those white trays now. Yeah, it was metal. It was that, but metal. Right, but it wasn't stackable. Like now, it stacks and it and, it's, and it locks into yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, no, sure. these just 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 rectangle with the with the you know thing, and you put the dough in it, and you put them in the, in the, you know like uh, these rolling racks. So it was a rolling rack inside the refrigerator, and and it was always a gap, it never crusted, never crusted because the refrigerators back then didn't have you know air blowing. Okay. It had the the radiator type of thing. What do you right, call that? Right. Yeah, like we, we your refrigerator at home has. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah whatever yeah. it's there's called. Not a fan. It's, there's no fan, yeah, there's yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. So it's what back. it wasn't blowing wind the the crust up the dough. Okay. You know, it just kept it at, at a cool at a really cool temperature. And we used that for many, many years till finally that all broke down. So I've never even seen that, um, that I can remember, but I, I understand exactly what you're saying. But like how how large was the was it the same size as the plastic trays? Yes. Like the yes. Oh really? Yeah. And then, the, and then, uh, like it would just be, you know, racks that you would just kind of right. slide well, into the fridge. We used to make the dough in the kitchen. Then we, uh, when we let it proof, then we had to carry it, physically, you know, carry it and to the front. So, so you only could carry like maybe two or three of those at a time because it was just full on top of each other. They weren't interlocking. And what was like a pizza? Re- like what was like the dough recipes back then? Was it just like fill it up, salt, sugar, yeast? Yeah, like I mean, I, I mean, the process uh, it was pretty much like run down that process for me. We never, we never, never, never used sugar ever. Okay. Okay. My father always used a biga. You know, okay. he worked. He worked for uh, a short time in a in a, uh, a bread factory in Italy. Okay. Uh, before he joined the Merchant Marine, but it was one of those uh, pate ferment, I guess, if you would call it, where you know, just one dough left over, and you just. Put it in in a dough oh, in, yeah, in, yeah, in, yeah. in a thing, and just and and that would just you carry. would take like a dough ball from the day before and, and uh, yeah and just yeah throw just it like, and, and it just carries on it carries on it was right. a thing that my father always wanted to do no 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 put the dough put the dough. yeah there you go and it feels so much better you know because it just carries on the dough from the previous 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 dough till I finally open up my this place got it got it so so what um. 
when when you guys were doing the Sicilians, like how did you proof them? Was it on top of the oven, or and then well, like we, was we, it a par bake? When we did the, the just run me through the whole process. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we put the two doughs on top of each other, let it sit there for about a half hour, so like that it just you know kind of melds uh -huh. into each other. Once it gets to a certain point where it's nice and proofed and there's bubbles, then you just put it out, stretch out the corners, put it on top of the oven for another half hour, and then bake it off. Then you get the five, six or something, whatever you need for the day. And what was the sauce? Was there sauce on it or yeah, no the, sauce? Yeah, the, the sauce that we had for uh, for the pizza, we just put that sauce on there. No water? No, no water, either. straight up, just a full cool cupino, scoop. full cupino. Full cupino. cupino <laughs> That's full how cupino you say it. Of sauce, and then we just go like this. <laughs> To the you hear that, place. guys? Nice. A copino. copino. That's what you put. All you fucking hipsters out there, you put a fucking copino of sauce. A copino is a ladle. A ladle. <laughs> see, see, these are like, I mean, like, it's, 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 I think it's so important, like, um, you know, uh, to get back to, like, uh, you know, at least have the knowledge of the original ways that these things were done. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and it doesn't, you don't have to do them exactly the same, but like having like that foundation and like the history of where this stuff came from. And right. Cause then you're able to figure out the reasonings why and blah, 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 blah. But, um, yeah. So you, you, you're, you're saying those Sicilians weren't like, uh, you know, they it, weren't it, like a huge seller. It, then, then it came to a point where it was. Oh, really? Then it came to a point where it was, where we made a separate batch just for Sicilians. Wow. Yeah. And what, what 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 years was that around? That was definitely that was definitely in uh definitely like uh mid eighties. Mid eighties. Mid eighties. Oh. Yeah. Didn't do that. Oh god. <laughs> so uh so yeah, so it, what well, about it like, happened, it happened, I, again, I did it in the mid eighties because I just got tired of putting the two doughs together. Right. You, know, you would have to make a whole batch. Where you just have to put these doughs together, so you're rolling these doughs individually, you know, and then you got to put them together. So why don't you just roll one dough ball? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I noticed uh, watching you roll dough balls that you kind of do it like the bakery style. Maybe oh, yeah. you learned that from your father. Oh, 100%, maybe you yeah. learned that like yeah, in the, yeah, you learned in the bakery. Yeah, because I do it like this. Yeah, but, like I've always seen guys like yeah. you know. I remember like working at like Italian joints too, where they would do it like they'd be like, "Oh, you can't do two hands," and I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here." <laughs> <laughs> That's I think actually uh, I might be able to do it kind of now. Not as yeah, good I think as I you. got a video out there somewhere when we doing it two hands. I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. There's a video? So. I think Mike's so. Mike's Pizza? I think so. I think Mike's Pizza video I, on uh, Brooklyn well, Pizza? I, yeah, I think it's there. Uh, that's great. Thanks thanks for calling me, Tony. All right, phone's on silent finally. Sorry, guys. Finally. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, I mean, uh, and, you know, yeah, with, God. With, those, with those wooden boxes, uh, let me tell you, they they make a big difference, you know, because they suck out all the moisture. It was a really really good box. I remember when, um, you know, we went from wood and we went to uh, you know metal. You know, a little bit of difference, but not big big difference. You know, you didn't really see a difference. But finally, when that refrigerator broke down, that dough retarder broke down, where we had the metal, we had to get new new dough retarder. Had to fan the whole thing. There was no shells, whatever. Oh, so we had to buy the plastic ones. You got the plastic ones. Yeah, and, we were talking about that the other day um, uh, with Joe, and I mean, I knew it when he said it, like I realized it, but I never really thought about it recently because uh, there's two types of, there's a the plastic and then there's a fiberglass. Right. Fiberglass, well, the fiberglass is the one we yeah, use. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder, I want to do a test um, <laughs> to see, you know what I'm saying, what like the cold retention is um, on those two things. And I'm really interested now. I never even knew there was like metal trays like that, like besides the sheet pen. I'll get I'm some really... pictures for you. I'll see where I'll dig them up. Yeah. And they, they had, um, you know what? Something's telling me, something in my memory is getting jogged where, like, maybe I was at a place. I think, you know what? I think I saw a place when I was a kid that I might have worked at that they had the metal ones, but they had, like, tops that slid on. And okay. it was, like a, like, a handle type of thing on the top where it like slid into there mm -hmm. yeah we're gonna have to find all this stuff i swear to god like every time i start going down like memory lane like i remember things that i like haven't thought about in like 20 years and right. i'm like oh like i went to uh uh first time i went to uh south spot my boy sal you've been there joe and john's and i saw him doing the oil method i completely forgot that that was a thing because like nobody does it anymore yeah. and then i was like oh yeah that used to be yeah. i remember learning how to do that well those tins those tins that we you know we put that uh 
you know, that was that that tin was full of oil, full of olive oil, and you took it out and you just <laughs> the, throw, throw the flour on top. Yeah, those those nine inch tins that were that we use. Oh, the the the, the gamellinis. Yeah, the the pizza. Uh, right, the pizza dough trays dough, or dough the tins. dough cans, cans, dough cans, dough cans. Dough cans. That was yeah. full of oil. Yeah, because we used we used the boxes at, at Mike's Pizza in Amityville, and then my uncles opened up a pizzeria out in the Hamptons okay. in '72. In '72, oh. so both my uncles, Uncle Uncle Frank and Uncle Valentino, went out east, and my father kept the place in Amityville. Okay. So out east, the place they bought it, they were using the the camelinis, the the, 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 the dough cans. cans, and there, you know, they were making pies, oil method, oil method. They were doing it the oil oh, method. Oh yeah, they were doing it. Were oil they method. using a screen or no? No. No screens. No screens. So it was like roses style, where it was like you would stretch it out, you put some flour, and then you right, put it on you the stretch peel. it out, nice, right? Bam, hit it with flour, and then just go like this. Go and, like that, so and the then put oil it back side down. up with the sauce. Yep. And the that's algorithm. exactly how they did it. I that's where I first learned the oil method was that I was working at Roses in Penn Station, and. You know, when I got the job there, I couldn't make, even though I was a pizza maker at that time, like they wouldn't let me make pizza because I didn't know the oil method. <laughs> so I was with this Albanian guy on the counter and it's, you know, it's Penn Station. So like being at the counter is like a, a like a skilled job at itself in a place oh, like yeah. that. Cause it's like, <laughs> you got to figure out the dance here in this little place. You got four ovens. It's like, yo, what can I get for you? Oh, you got two egg plates, two upside down, this, this, this. You got fucking hundred people lined up. But um, and once you master that, you could do anything in life. Well, that's how I felt when I first mastered it. I was like, and I completely, I swear to God, until I walked into Joe and John's, like that was like out of my memory. And then it all came rushing back to me. Yeah. I was like, I, and I remembered like when I learned and when I started making pies like that, I could fill up an oven. I was like, oh, now I can work anywhere. <laughs> because I used to walk into places like sometimes... I would I would just walk around the city. I'd walk around Brooklyn. I'd walk around Manhattan. I'd just go into pizzerias and be like, "Hey, you need a pizza guy? Hey, you need a pizza guy?" But if I walked into a place and I saw him doing the oil method, I wouldn't even ask because I didn't know how to do it. Mm. And then when I learned that, I was like, "Oh, oh man, <laughs> I can work fucking anywhere I want. Yeah. I can be a real pizza fucking yeah. nomad." You know, that's I mean, that's what it was. It was you know, I didn't, uh, I, you know, I, I I was a high school dropout. Um, I was a knucklehead and it was just like, you know, pizza was his job that you didn't, you didn't need, um, you know, a resume for, it was just kind of like you go into a place, it's cash. Um, if they see you can make pizza, you get the job and yeah, they put you on much. the schedule for 60 hours a week, uh, for, you know, $10 an hour. What it's like, how much man? money you want? It's $10. Like, give me $10. Nice. Give me $8. Give me you know what man. I mean? Oh, no, it was great. It was great back then, but then it switched real quick because New York real estate prices went through the roof. So all of a sudden, the, the $10 an hour wasn't uh, cutting as much. But yeah. when I was like 18 years old, it was nice because you can rent an apartment in the East Village for like 600 bucks a month back then. You know what I mean? Like, easy. Like, I was in, I had an apartment in Gravesend. I was paying six fifty two bedroom apartment. It was fucking great. Oh, nice. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, going back to the day, like, um, oh, you know what I want to fucking know? So, you know, I've been to your mother's house. She's got the garden and everything and the chickens. Did she always have that? Did you have that when you were a kid? Yeah, oh, yeah. She she always had a, uh, I don't even want to call it a garden. A garden is just like, you know, little things. We had a freaking farm in our backyard. Right. Our backyard wasn't a backyard where we went back there and, and played. Yeah. It, it's in the backyard we had, we went out there to work. We picked, you know, <laughs> with the tomatoes. Mike, go out, go, we're making a salad. Go get the tomatoes. Uh, go, go to the side of the house, get the arugula, you know. I mean, that's what, what it was. She, grew, right. she grew, That's how she grew up. She grew up in Italy where, you know, her father, my grandfather, you know, had all this land and they used to farm their food. Sure. That's how it was. They had they had the their pig that got slaughtered. They had their chickens where you know they made you know whatever they did with it. You know they had their rabbits. They had everything. Everything everything they needed was right there. The only thing that was missing was a cow, which you know there's you know right. cows, <laughs> you know. But they had everything. So they had the, they had the, the butcher come in to slaughter the pig. So they had meat. They did what they had to do with that. You know mm -hmm. so. So this they had it in them. So they brought it here. That that's this is what they, you know. This is this is this is you know. They never got themselves out of that routine. This is in their heads what they needed to do, you know. 
you couldn't go to uh, back then. You couldn't go to a supermarket and, and find like you know broccoli rob. Right. What's broccoli rob? Yeah. Rugolo. You didn't know rugolo. You, you didn't have any of this stuff. Uh -huh. This is all Italian stuff. So she grew it. Right. You know. And then we had the pork stores. Yeah. We had the pork stores, and those pork stores would be packed. Uh, of holidays, Christmas, Easter, you name it, you know, it was such a great feeling and stuff. You know, you go there, you get your prosciutto. Nobody, nobody knew about Nutella. Except the pork <laughs> stores. You had to go to the pork store yeah, to pick nobody up Nobody knew Nutella. about Nutella, yeah. man. It was my thing. Now had, everybody fucking Yeah, knows. had friends coming over. They were like, oh, Mike, what the fuck is this? It's delicious. What is this? Nutella. I never heard of it. Nutella. You know, go bring it home to the mom. I can't find it in the supermarket. You know, well, you're not going to find it in the supermarket. Now it's everywhere. Yeah. Now it's everywhere. So there's nothing special anymore. It's not especially, ah. which, which is okay. Yeah. It's all right, you I know, mean, but they, everything's just so, like, there. I, I think there's something really special about, um, you know, growing stuff in your backyard and stuff like that. 100%, like, not a lot yeah. of people do that anymore. Like, I mean... I mean, it's back-breaking work. I mean, nobody, nobody, nobody wants, nobody wants to do it. You know, right. they'll build, they'll, they'll get a couple of tomato plants, a zucchini plant. Oh, look at mine! It's for my garden. What garden? Yeah. You get a freaking, it's, it's a pot plant. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, we'll, we'll, I feel like every year. I mean, I, I obviously got my thing going out there, and like when I look at. Um, you know, uh, my boy Danny Zuko's mother and how she did it. She, 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 like, yeah, like you said, she had like a farm. Like the whole backyard was just on the ground this low, and uh, she would put weed tarp and then cut the holes where right. the plants were, so you know she wouldn't have to pick all the weeds out. But yeah, it was you know I don't know quarter acre worth of uh, wow. shit growing. And um, but now you know, like I do all raised beds, so I don't have to bend over. Uh, I don't have to deal with weeds. Um, I haven't brought it in yet, but it's definitely going in. Going in in a couple of weeks. As soon as Dom the plumber comes over, we're getting the hose back there and we're putting the irrigation, the drip irrigation. But you know, I mean, when you were a kid, you didn't have that. I mean, no. I'm sure, I'm sure it existed, but like you couldn't well, go was, on like Amazon right. and like be like, oh, let me get a drip yeah. irrigation system going. But the, but with with that that said, my mother and father they they enjoyed it. They wanted to go out. It gave them, you know, something to do and something to, you know, look forward to. They want every morning they got up before work. My father would get up before work and spend at least an hour and a half in the garden doing what he had to do because he just he just enjoyed it. Picking up the hoe, doing what he got to do, bending down, picking up the thing, looking this, tying it up, you know, mm -hmm. making sure, smoking a cigarette, <laughs> looking at his work and stuff like that. You know, they really, really enjoyed it. You know, right. it, it was just one of those things. And my father also was uh, uh, was a fisherman. Okay. My father's father, that's what they did for for a living in Italy. They we lived right by the water there and they had, you know, those typical Italian little boats that you see, you know, right, 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 right. So he was a fisherman, so he really has a passion for fishing, you know, and on his day off, <clears throat> that's what we did in the summertime. We went to Jones Beach. We didn't go to Jones Beach to go, you know, sunbathe and and whatever. And play Jones volleyball. Beach over here. Jones Beach over yeah, here, yeah. you know. <clears throat> We went on the bay side to go fishing. Okay. Uh, we go fishing. I mean, back then, we had a, a big, big dragnet. My father brought over from Italy. Dragnet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like those. You yeah. Go so, in so the, you walk so, in the water with the no, poles. No, 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 no professional okay. one. Okay. So we had a rubber raft, and we put this hundred feet long net. I mean, it's a big, big ass net. Yeah. You know? Like the trawlers use, <laughs> and we put it on a rubber raft, and then we row out. Okay. Right? So you have about a you know fifty foot, fifty foot uh, line on one end. You go out and you come to a, a, a U and you come back in. And then once you come back in, once one person's pulling on that side, one person's pulling on that side, we just pull and pull and pull. And finally, when the thing comes in, Jesus Christ, every kind of fish. You can striped, imagine. striped bass, sand sharks, uh, starfish. I mean, you name it. Calamar, shrimps. It was all You name it. Yeah. You so, name it, you know? I mean, and that's going back then. I mean, right now, if you ever did that now, forget about it. Be, they shoot you. Right, you know? right, right, right. I mean, right, yeah, right. I, I mean, you know. I remember I, I have, like, one of my, uh, you know, fondest and most, uh, like, the memories I can recollect a lot from uh, one year we were in the, we were on the beach, we were in the Jersey Shore, and um, somebody, it must have been, like, one of my mom's friends, kids or something that I think they lived down there, and 
they you know grew up on the beach so they were like master sandcastle builders <laughs> and they built like this giant sandcastle that had like a moat and they, nice. they dug out like the water that came in and then we took these like two sticks with a net um like a smaller version right 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 i know exactly what you're talking about and you would go out and then you would go into a circle and they would put the fish in right the, right different levels of the sandcastle so they'd be like oh really swimming around and little killies so then like after you catch it like what do you do you just pick out what you want and like throw it all back yeah well you know uh, yeah they they try not to waste anything oh they know? take it all oh they take the starfish we took it all we took it all <laughs> and uh and as 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 the day was progressing and you could see it starting to you know starting to get a little bit you know darker that's yeah that's when we that's when we dig a dig a hole collect all the sticks and build a bigger nice big fire on the beach on the beach really like i said this is back in the day nobody okay. said anything you yeah, know sure striped bass throw it on there crabs yeah throw, we used to cook everything on the beach whatever we caught and whatever, just over a wood fire and yeah we wood, you bought the grate and whatever wood did whatever. you have any condiments or like or was it just the sucking uh yeah so, salt and lemon salt and, and lemon salt and lemon olive oil my mother would bring that was it that's just it in a bag that's it that's fucking there's something beautiful about that i and, almost like want to go out to the beach and fucking do that and while while we were fishing while we were fishing my mother and her sister and whoever else was there would clam Okay. So they would clam. We would fish. They would catch like bushels of clams. Really? I mean, just because they just love doing it. I mean, just they just did it. I can't stand clam. How the I, fuck do you clam? They, they, I don't even they know. Have to, they I have don't to even dig know what that with their means. feet like this. You just see a bunch of people out there going like this, like doing a twist. In the water, in, in like the ocean, or in the bay. In the bay. In the bay. In the bay. Yeah, you yeah. know. And they feel, you know, feel whatever. Reach under and just and just collect. I mean, bags, bags. You know. Wow. They bring a pot. We put the freaking pot over there and just steam up the clams. They open up. Oh yeah. No, That's people, crazy. People bring food and go into the concession stands. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just pulling out the food from the water. Yeah. Well, like, my, I mean, I never ate it because I was like a fucking spoiled fucking 80s brat kid. But uh, that that was, you know, my mother used to take us uh, crabbing. You know, we'd, right. have the, we'd have the cage and then we'd have a bunch of fishing lines that we'd put the fish heads on. And yeah, then right. we'd tie them to the dock in the, in the bay and then we'd pull up all these crabs. And her girlfriend, Bonnie... We take it all back to her house and uh, you know they make a nice crab sauce sucking the oh man she was like an animal with it she would just because yeah. they were like blue crabs and she'd yeah. crack them up be sucking everything out we'd be eating macaroni and cheese or something like that you know what <laughs> I mean? That's, uh, you, you're all pissed don't want to uh bro we had no <laughs> we had zero appreciation for you know i mean all the things that i have appreciation for now we had none of it when we were a kid. Because but isn't that the case with every, with, a, with all kinds of kids? You know. Well, I, think I mean, it, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, think it was a sign of the time. Well, I think what happened, like, was I mean, um, you know, my father's generation, it was just kind of like, you know, whatever my grandfather wanted to eat, whether that was like stuffed clam or calamari or whatever the fuck it was, and my father would, you know, he would think that was like disgusting and. You know, but right. it was like a situation where it's like, hey, man, we're not making fucking separate meals over here. You know what I mean? What You're going to eat what's on the table. So then well, when, when how, he had me, will. he he kind of like, uh, I guess he didn't like that, um, uh, that you know, situation. Um, and he kind of like looked back at it badly. So it was just kind of like, you know, all right, we'll, we'll let you eat whatever, you know, you want to eat kind of thing which i don't think either of those are the right thing i think the thing that he did was even a little bit more wrong but i think there's like some you know there's something in between those two things where it's like all right i'm not gonna make you eat fucking tripe you know what i'm saying but like you know we're gonna put some uh spinach yoki where we're got on the table and if you got a problem with that you could go starve to death you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. there's like something in between yeah. stuffed calamari with like hard-boiled eggs and uh yeah. and pig's feet and tripe and you know what i mean uh eating gushers and macaroni and cheese uh yeah for, listen for that, Sunday that, dinner. that that was uh, everything i lived through it was all that type of ethnic food italian ethnic food that you know that you won't you won't see it on a menu 
back then, and some of them you won't even see on the menu now because right. it's more casalinga. It's more like homemade. But you probably in-house. you probably liked it. Like you were still very close. Like I, my I, father was like as American as American gets. Like he's right. Italian American, but like right. Well, what do we know? We didn't know any better. It's not like you know. It's not like you know. We had you know cousins and you know that would tell them we're doing this. Thing. We're doing everybody was doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, well, that's what, then, we, that's what I think he had. He had so many people around him, probably growing up, that would look at that and that would be like, "Oh, that's gross. You would, why would you eat that?" Blah 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 blah. So that puts a thought in your head, right? But in your case, it's just like, no, that's what I've been eating but since you, I'm you know, three years you, old. You have, you have your American friends come over and you know it's dinner time and they come in and they they look at your plate and they see a a hoof. They, yeah, they yeah, see yeah. a pig hoof in your plate with, with you know with the nails They're like this. Like, like, what the, like, the, what fuck, the is fuck is that? that? It's like, yeah, no, it's pig feet. You want a bite? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like it's a hot dog or something, you know. So but, we'll, yeah, <laughs> let's. Uh, yeah. But but I, I was I was the opposite because you know the, here we are eating this you know real you know ethnic Italian food you know and you go to your friend's house and they have you know man how come I can't how come you can't cook you know whatever fucking hot dogs or I can't do I can't do you know grilled cheese you know. I was like, hey, if you want that kind of shit, then go to your fucking friend's house. This is what we eat over here, all right. right. And then as you get older, like you said, you start appreciating things like yeah. that. Because nobody cooks like that no more. Uh, Nobody. 100%. Nobody. What, what kind of... Oh, yeah.